Well, good morning, folks. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another review video. Hopefully, I'm going to put out three this week. There are three airports that I really want to um, review and get out there for you guys to have a look at and decide whether you want to make purchases for. My name's Lee, your virtual airline pilot. Before we go any further, I'd like to say a big thank you to the subscriber, viewer, who um, made a simple recommendation to me. You can now buy me a coffee. Um, it's a small amount. Um, for those of you, if you appreciate my work and uh, you find my reviews useful, you can um, remunerate me a little bit, if you like, by buying me a coffee. Um, I'll put the link in the description below. It's not a lot of money, um, but um, every little helps. Um, I spend a lot of time and um, effort and uh, some funds in getting the right software to be able to produce these videos and um, hopefully for your enjoyment and for your edification so if you feel like um, giving me something back buy me a coffee would be great thank you very much to the guy who um, suggested that and um, to anybody who does so thank you so back to the video as I said hopefully three this week this is the first of this week's videos we are in Poland um, we are in Gdansk, Lech Walesa Airport in Poland, Echo Papa Golf Delta. This is the new Payware Senior Air by Drzreki Designs, and you're looking at version 1 for the PC version of Flight Simulator 2020. And I'd like to thank um, Drzreki Designs for sending me this copy for review purposes. Guys, thank you very much. Um, you send me a number of um, your products here and there for review, and I'm really grateful and thankful that I use them. So the download is 1.44 gig and it installs at 3.92 gig, just under 4 gig. It's currently available from both SimMarket and from Orbix. Prices are pretty similar, I think it's slightly cheaper at Orbix when you work out when you add the, the, the BAT and the tax, but uh, there really isn't a lot in it. Give you the SimMarket price, it's currently 21 euros and 60 cents, which equates to roughly 18 dollars and 55 cents US or £20.45 pence UK. As ever, US and UK prices are all estimates based on the Euro, and they include tax or VAT, which of course may vary depending on the country you're in when you make your purchase. Um, this is a, a long-awaited scenery. Um, many people are raving about it, and I for one are also raving about it. Their work is really good, so um, let's have a look at the features list. So, the features. We have a high quality model of Echo Papagol Delta Gdansk, featuring the up to date version with extensive details throughout the whole airport. Um, FPS frame rate friendly design with epic night textures, dynamic lighting and PBR materials, high definition mesh, and custom sounds. And we also have performance friendly interior modelling at all terminal buildings, hangars, and the control tower static aircraft, custom animations such as trains and vehicles, animated jetways and we'll see that in the um, jetway test shortly. And it's fully compatible with GSX Pro using the Cartana files. So there's one GSX Pro um, profile included but there's also a couple out on flightsim.to depending on what you like. So as ever let's give you some history Gdansk, Lech Walesa Airport, Echo Papa Gold Delta, is a public loose international airport owned and operated by Port Loznitsi Gdansk Spolka ZOO. Located some 7.5 miles or 12 kilometers northwest of the city of Gdansk in Poland, the airport is not very far from the city center of the Tricity metropolitan area which comprises Gdansk, Sopot and Gdina. Since 2004, the airport's been named after Lech Walesa, the former Polish president and union leader. With around 5.4 million passengers served in 2019, it is the third largest airport in Poland for passenger traffic. The first passenger flights out of Gdansk were operated in 1919 from an airfield in the Langfuhr district of the city of Danzig now the Wrezesh district of Gdansk and I apologize for my pronunciation. This was possible thanks to the transformation of what was a military installation and then transformed into a civilian facility. 
The airport was, at the time, additionally used for airmail services and by the police. The first Polish route was operated between Gdansk, Warsaw and Lviv by Aero Lloyd in September of 1922. This domestic service was the beginning of the company which later became Lot Polish Airlines, which today is still Poland's national carrier. After World War II, where the airport suffered severe damage from bombing, it was rebuilt and provided with modern technologies which allowed the airport to develop further. Old domestic routes, as well as many international destinations, were relaunched. The airport had regular connections to countries like Hungary, Germany, Bulgaria, Denmark and Sweden. As time went on and around the 1960s, the old airport suffered from dilapidation and its facilities rapidly became outdated, so a new airport was built near the village of Rabicheo and this new airport opened in 1974, being named Lech Walesa after the former president in 2004. In 2012, prior to the UEFA Euro 2012 Football Championship, a new terminal was unveiled, serving over 3 million passengers in 2014. The airport is served by over 17 airlines, three of which are cargo operators. So there you go folks, that's some history for you. Um, somebody mentioned to me the other day about price and there have been continuing discussions about whether sceneries are worth the prices they're being offered at. Um, and my take on the fact is that you sort of have to look at the work um, that's gone into the project and base it against other airports of similar design to see whether you think it's worth it. Right off the bat I think this is fine. The product um, is really really well done and you'll see that in the review. Um, and I think the price is quite acceptable. So there you go, that was history. Now let's go and have a look at some runways. So runways. Gdansk Airport operates a single runway, 2911, measuring 9,186 feet or 2,800 meters and it's constructed from an asphalt concrete mix. The airport lies at an elevation of 489 feet or 149 meters and sits within the GMT UTC plus two hours time zone. Like much of mainland Europe, Poland observes daylight saving time or DST and so is currently two hours ahead of the UK. So both ends of the runway have high intensity runway lighting, center line lighting and precision approach path indicators on the left side of the runway. Runway 29, however, and we're looking down the throat of it now, in addition, has high intensity airfield lighting system, airfield lighting system with sequence flashing lights, and touchdown zone lighting. So you can see the sequence flashing lights here. There's the touchdown zone lighting, the center line lighting, and everything else is there, pretty much just as it should be. This runway 29 also has an instrument landing system certified to category 3B zero visibility flight operations. It also has RNP and VOR approach options. So if the weather's really bad, this is the one you want to come in on. Let's have a look at the other end, runway 11. So here we are looking down the throat of runway 11, and as you can see, it has everything um, that the other end has. In addition, this runway has RNP and VOR approach options only but it also has the approach lighting system as described you can see there. So you can do RNAV approaches into here, there's no ILS, the ILS is at the other end. Gdansk also operates various restrictions during low visibility, so you pilots should check the charts when coming in here, particularly if the weather's down. As you can see, generally the lighting at the airport looks impressive, it's really good. So that does it for runways, let's now do the jetway test. Okay, so jetways, so here we are on stand 23 with my uh, 737-800. Let's test the jetway. Right, the wheels move really nicely. Um, as usual, the stairs go into the concrete a little bit, but that happens in pretty much every jetway I look at. But that's a nice motion, quite a nice animation. Right up to the aircraft door. And that is a pretty good fit. Let's have a close look. That's not bad at all. That's 
um, perfectly acceptable, really good. As you can see, the stairs have gone into the concrete here, but as I said, this happens quite a lot. We are looking from the other side. Jetway really looks good, just a real pity about this here. However, let's have a look inside the jetway, see how much we can see. Right, here we are inside the jetway and you can see the door is fully open and it's not interfering with the hood, which is great. But it is pretty close, if I just go back just a little bit. There you go, we get a closed door. However, as you can see, the inside of the jetway is fully modelled, which is really excellent. And there we are looking in the other direction. I mean, that's, that's really nice. Very impressed with that. So let's retract the jetway. And there's the usual delay until the jetway starts moving. But as you can see, that's quite a nice animation. Jetway looks really good, I have to say. So there we are, back in position. Jetways work fine. That about does it for jetways. So there you go folks, a little bit of history um, at runways and uh, we've also had a look at the jetways. Now you can see the airport in all its glory back in the daytime. Let's get down and do a ramp tour and have a look at what this scenery offers us. Okay, so a quick airside tour of the ramp just to show you the detail. Well, as you can see, it's pretty impressive. I mean, that the, the airside ramp area looks brilliant. There's a static Ryanair aircraft. as the airport name beautifully done in the glass, I might add. Loads of ground detail clutter. Modeling's really good. Every building seems to be textured as per the features list. Couple more um, static aircraft. And going across here, you've got this huge hangar with an aircraft inside. That's uh, a Polish lot aircraft. Going out to the taxiways here. Signage is good. The taxiways um, are really beautifully textured. It's just come up a little bit. And there you can see another sort of turning area there with bum parking stands and lots of uh, markings on the ground, oil stains, etc. It's really nice, no problems at all. Um, and obviously there also there's, there's details off the airport as well when you go further in this direction. So here's more buildings and things going on here at the threshold end of runway 29. There's the perimeter fence, as you can see, beautiful modelling. Everything right down to the static aircraft. Love those gates, look at how well they've been done. As you can see, more parking areas, more buildings, beautifully modelled and textured. This is where the extra work goes in. We all know that we've got the terminal and the parking area for the jet jockeys amongst us. But look there, even the windows. That's the fence below us and look, still more buildings off the airport to have a look at and that have been worked on. And they're all fully textured. Okay, so let's head back to the airport and do a landside tour, or rather a landside of the terminals. To the right there you can see the animated train line, um, and of course animated cars all going down the roads, even as they should be. But again, you look at the quality of these buildings, and the ground that they sit on, the way it's all been beautifully modelled. This is where developers go the extra mile to make it look good. Fire station down there, petrol station 
and just loads of detail on both the buildings and the ground traffic. It's very impressive. Hoping we'll see the train come along in a minute. So there you can see the terminal from landside and the train station. Look, you've even got animated people, beautifully modelled. Here comes the train. That's wonderful, isn't that stunning? really impressive so let's do a couple of shots airside where you park and see what the pilot sees when he pulls up here during the day here's my aircraft on stand 23 and as you can see the stand itself has everything all the markings correctly some stains oil stains and bits and pieces loads of clutter everything looks really good here there's a view looking in through the windows, you can see an animated passenger there inside. There's the visual guidance docking system. Or visual docking guidance system, I could never get it quite right. Here you've got some really nice cars. This is Signature Aviation, this is um, essentially for VIPs and privates. Um, they take them out to the airport, but VIP passengers or commercially important passengers get taken out to the aircraft from a special suite by car. Another good example there of um, what the tow local tug looks like and here you can see the development work on the building which looks really impressive. Just another shot there going through the ground entrance or exit to gate 22 I and mean, we look at the detail. It's been beautifully done, absolutely beautifully done. And here's a look at the other end of the terminal, there's a really good animation of a walking passenger there. Some lovely detail inside the terminal that we'll look at shortly. There you can just see the train on the other side. Um, it's really, really good. <laughs> I really can't complain. It's fantastic. And here you've got the static model of this Ryanair aircraft, complete with passengers waiting to board. And the whole scene looks really impressive. It's very, very well done. And just a close-up look at this building on this side. I mean, it's just, just, it all looks so real. It's been beautifully modelled. Everything's been wonderfully positioned, textured. It all looks quite real. And just to show you there, that ground power unit, there you can actually hear the noise from it. A quick look at some of the signage at this end of the building. So these are the cargo stands, there's the DHL building. Got the control tower there in the distance. In fact, let's go and have a look at the tower. So there's the control tower building, as seen from air side there, you can see the animated train going by. Let's go inside the tower, see what we can see. Quick view from the outside. And there's a view inside looking out, as you can see three controllers, one young lady, animated. This is what I like to see and um, this is what makes things worth the money. When I talk about extra work and the developer going the extra mile, this is it. Recently we've looked at sceneries where there's been half modelling in the tower or really nice modelling in the tower but no people. Or some really good sceneries where they've got people but they're static and here you've got an animated one. In fact, animated, they're both animated. The guy on the left there is working on an iPad. I mean, it's really excellent, absolutely excellent. And there's the board building scene from Landside. As you can see, some nice modelling and texturing, everything right down to the grubbiness here on the concrete of the building. It's really nice. And just look at the detail in here. Here's a lot 737 having work on it. The engine on the left, um, number one engine, is uh, has been removed from its uh, from its pylon, and is being worked on. 
And there you've got two engineers working on the removed engine and you can hear the work sounds. You, you can hear a generator going. And again, the quality of the model. This isn't just some routine static aircraft that's been dropped in. This has been beautifully modelled. So here's the cargo area land side that's been modelled. Um, and yeah, what can you say? It looks great. It really does. And once again, when we talk about going the extra mile, here you can see the building's been parallaxed, so it gives you a definition of something going on inside. And the detail is, is a high, high quality. We're up close, and it hasn't blurred. Very, very impressive. So just a quick look at some of the buildings and the car parking generally. Okay, the ground is a little bit lower resolution but I think that's fine. I mean, it works and it's probably to do with frame rates as well, which as you can see are quite excellent. I've been buzzing around here in the drone and I've had little or no stutters or pauses. Perfectly fine. Beautiful signage here. Petrol station down there, yet more um, signage and hoardings. And I like the fact as well, in general, that you can see there the cars and vehicles that they've animated going down the roads are actually going down the roads properly as they should be. Okay, these two are a bit close and they're going down the middle. But, you know, generally it works. From a distance that looks pretty impressive. So a quick look this way, you can see the construction of the railroad, the um, aerotrain bridge, which looks really good. And again, more work on built on built sort of, sort of uh, what you might call insignificant buildings, yet they're parallaxed. This is probably going to look quite good at night. So let's just do a general landside tour first of the terminal and the road system. Well, it all looks pretty impressive. Okay, the roads are low resolution, probably could have been done higher re resolution here. But generally I'm not complaining. Again, you've got ambient sounds that reflect what's going on. Vehicles driving. You've got the roar of car engines. Some nice passenger models down there too. Some of which are animated, by the way. And as we get further away, the sound reduces. There goes the train again. Very nice indeed. Just a quick shot showing you some of the quality of the signage here. There are loads of these signs all over the airport landside. And um, they're all just as good as these ones are. I do love that train. It's probably one of the best train animations I've seen. And again, as we go up close, the sign doesn't fade into obscurity. It's still very crystal clear. Okay, just a slow tour over part of this area so you can see the terminal and the passengers outside. Well, the models are really good. I'm sure I saw somebody walking out here before, but maybe not. I don't know, but they, they look to be all static models, but they're all pretty impressive. Just a quick run over the train station. Let's have a look at some of the modelling here. Everything down to the wires. Okay, as the train comes along here, we do the little run across here, and you can see the station modelling. Again, nothing left to chance. All of the signs are crisp and clear. Two trains passing each other there. It's really, really nice. So I'm going to stop here. Hopefully the trains will disappear in a minute. There goes one, and the other. And there you can see some of the quality here on the platform. Again, we're talking about going the extra mile, 
animated people that is a really nice passenger animation by the way very smooth and again we go up close to some of the signage there's also this vending machine on the left and we're right up close and it still looks real because the images are high resolution and of course you can hear all the sounds going on of the traffic it's just the sound animations are wonderful and she's not bad close up and a quick look over the other side it's really impressive so let's go inside the building now and this is what I really like okay um, I, I get that you pilots flying in and out of here are going to do that and enjoy that and you won't even see this and you think it's unnecessary I get that but there are those people like myself who think that we have such an amazing simulator here with so many facilities that we can use to make a place look real that those facilities should be used and developed to their fullest extent where possible and this is a good example where the developer really has gone to town you've got everything here the detail inside landside here is excellent down to the shops on the left on the signage all high resolution images so they look real passengers here we've got lining up in the queue we've also got uh, um, check-in agents as well and even baggage loader over there it's really good and we've got the odd animation and look you can see the animated train through the glass all of it just adds to the ambience and atmosphere so again you've got animated check-in agent there and of course all the signage there looks really crisp even up close and there up on the left here you've got a baggage loader looking in the other direction everything just as it should be there got a young lady going into the toilets there and there you can see the security check again fully developed and fully modeled it looks fantastic this airport is starting to appear really really good value for money with the content that's within it you've got everything at the moment I can't see anything that they've left a chance you know to even develop the security area to this level of modeling and detail is really going the extra mile and again here we are looking at some of the shops I mean again it looks so real because everything is nicely developed people in the right places the ambience is just stunning inside the terminal here and once again we've got everybody as they should be there you've got this little um, cafeteria place here with, complete with a person behind the, uh, the till as it were and again you can listen to the sounds of the ambience inside the the hall here here's the arrivals area people standing waiting for people to come out and the various car rental agencies and again people sitting waiting the whole ambience inside the terminal land side looks fantastic so let's go airside and have a look and see what they've done airside and see if the same level of work has been produced so here we are in airside and as you can see um, the same amount of work has gone into airside as is landside okay we have one or two repetitions of models but I'm really not complaining about that and again you've got the ambience where you can hear people and things going on as it were nice little restaurant area here and again you've got people sitting there waiting for their gates and we've got a flight attendant sitting at the gate waiting to allow people to board an aircraft very nice I love the detail I just love the way this has been done it's such a fantastic airport um, and with the amount of detail and the work that's been done this I'm afraid this goes up among the top ones here 
There's recce design, their skills have really, really improved. And now I certainly consider them as one of the top developers, especially when you look at the work that's gone into this. Details fantastic. So here we are up close to the departures board and it's only here that they begin to blur slightly but the detail is still readable. And again I really like the ambience with the sounds, people talking. It's all been beautifully done, very impressive. So that was the airport during the day and as you can see they've done an extensive amount of work and I've really been looking at the airport itself. have to remember that you've got stuff that's been developed here off airport as well that I haven't even looked at and I leave for you people to see and explore at your leisure. So for now let's turn the lighting down to dusk and see what the lighting looks like on the airport. Okay, so we've turned the lights down low. It's now 20 past nine in the evening. It's July 2023. We're in the summer. Um, the lights come on at 21.15, quarter past nine. But I thought we'd sort of take them just a couple of minutes past. And this is the view of the airside ramp at dusk. As you can see, the lighting has been beautifully done. Um, just as good as the airport is at the day. We've got green center line lights for taxiing, blue airfield edge lights, to denote the airfield boundary as usual. Um, the ground markings are nicely lit. There are no globes or sobo globes that I can see floating around, certainly airside. And the lighting, as we'd expect, is very subtle, really very subtle indeed. So there's the runway and the high speed exits that you've got there too. And you've got um, some beautiful lighting on some of the off airport buildings as well. That's looking down there towards the threshold of runway 29. And there's the threshold of runway 11 and if you look to the right we've got the animated train which is lit. Just as it should be. So many animations like this aren't lit at all. And then the distance, in a minute we'll have a look, you've got the train station out here and there's another one back at the other end too. So let's get down to the ramp and see what it looks like airside. So here we are at my stand, 23, my aircraft's parked. You've got a static aircraft over there to the left, Wizz Air. You can see in through the glass to the terminal airside, the people walking about. Um, lots of ground clutter, as indeed there should be. It's just really, really nice. So just a quick look from ground level here, you can hear the sound of the tug. And if you look across to the right here, you've got the terminal all beautifully lit and the lower area which is where most of the um, engineers work and the various offices are also lit up although they're parallax but they're parallax to a very very high degree of quality so a little tour of airside on the ramp at dusk just to let you have a look at the lighting and the way the stands look as we pass over this whiz air you'll hear the generator of the ground power unit Come a bit closer. I mean, that's a really good use of sound. And again, there you can see inside the terminal building. And again, we're talking ambience and atmosphere, and it looks really impressive. Again, got a ground power unit there you can hear. There's this building, again parallaxed windows on parts of the building that make it look really impressive.
Here's the cargo ramp and you can see the buildings are nicely lit. Very nice. So as we move up to the hangar, let's pop inside. And once again you've got lovely sounds where the air engineers are working on this aircraft. So let's have a quick look at the taxiways, entry and exits. Here you can see signage is still good, you're not going to have a problem at dusk. Centre line lights are wonderful and we've even got stop bars. There below us you can see we've got wigwags, let's come down a bit. Very nice, wigwags and stop bars, I don't think I've seen that in the scenery for a while. And there you've got the signage on the left and right side, it's all really really impressive. And just a close up look at one of the green centre line lights for you to show you that just how well it's been modelled. I really like these kind of um, details which work. And as you come off the runway, this is the view you're going to get. Very nice indeed. So here's the view of the train station land site and again you can hear the ambient noise of vehicles and cars. And again, beautifully lit, not a single Asobo globe floating anywhere in sight. All the lighting provided as it should be by the correct lighting. Here comes the train and you can hear cars and the ambient sounds are really impressive. And once again, the trains are properly lit. So you can see parallaxing on the side of the train with some lighting installed, which gives you the right impression. It's very, very good. So here's your view land side. Got a little bit of flickering in the distance, but I think that might be my graphics card. And again, you can see into the terminal landside area. It's very, very nice. And a view in the other direction. Uh, you know, it's just great. You guys not on a Sobo globe floating around in sight. It's really, really good. And as I said before, I thought this building might look really good in the darkness hours. And indeed it does. Parallaxing to the highest level. That looks very, very impressive. And again, you can see some really good modelling, even out this far. Again, more work on off airport buildings. There to the right, you can see the other station at the other end of the line. And more parallaxing on windows to a lesser degree out here. But again, you know, some of the buildings more, some of them less. But this is a top scenery, make no mistake. It all looks really impressive. We look to the lighting below there, there's a petrol station. There goes our train and look at the way it lights up the track. 
Now we're land side of the cargo area, again with proper appropriate lighting. It's really impressive. Quick look at the hotel here. So again we're up close and you can see the parallaxing looks real because the images are of a higher resolution. It's very nice, some good signage and some nice subtle lighting. And there's a view inside the terminal at dusk. Very, very nice indeed. Okay, let's drop it down to night time now. Okay, half past 11 at night and the night is fully upon us. And here you can see the ramp lighting at night. It's come up a little bit more. Not by much, but enough to make it worthwhile. A nice shot of the moon there, and again the ramp lighting looks really good, as indeed does the taxiway lighting in the distance there. And looking in the other direction, there's the threshold of runway 11 to the left. And here we are looking at the ramp stand there by the Wizz Air static plane, and you can hear the, air, the um, ground generator. And looking in through the airside windows to the lounges. It's really impressive. So here's a high level shot showing you the railway station land side and the roof and here in the distance you can see the train coming, we'll just see it pull into the station. It's probably one of the best train animations I've seen for a while, it looks really good. And you can see the lights lighting up the track. And again when we're talking ambience and atmosphere this really does it, there's the other train. The animation is really good. Okay, 20 past to a 25 past four, four, four in the morning, and you can see the sun's beginning to come up over the horizon. Um, just got the last little bit glimmers of light on the ramp there. I mean, that, that looks really quite nice. Okay, so 9.30 in the morning, and uh, time to give you my conclusions and thoughts. Do, what do I think of this scenery? It's really impressive. It's up there with the likes of Fly Tampa, Pyrig Dev Company, and many others. Does Reiki Design deserve a lot of credit for their skills, the way they've managed it, the way it sits in the... Um, terrain um, it just looks great I'm gonna fly in here sometime this week and um, enjoy this airport and hopefully try and get a video out but uh, everything is beautifully modeled everything's PBR textured it's weathered um, the sounds are really nice they haven't been overdone um, they're just where they should be and it adds to the ambience of the airport the train animation is one of the best I've seen for a while looks particularly good at darkness hours Interior of the terminal is very, very well modelled, both landside and airside. It's great to see things like flight attendants, check-in agents sitting behind the desks, waiting to check people in. They're not empty. They've even got a baggage drop guy there too, which is very impressive. All the signage is really crystal clear, even up close. Um, there's extensive use of parallaxing, all of it at a quite high resolution, so it looks real. Um, and again, also, uh, not having been content with having done an airport in such high detail, they've added work to off-airport buildings as well. Um, it's a stunning scenery, really. Is it worth the uh, 22 euros? Yes, it is. It's most definitely worth that. It's probably worth a little bit more, actually. But it's very, very competitively priced. And if you want Gdansk, if you like flying out into Poland, this is the best version of the airport currently available. So there you go folks, Gdansk Lech Walesa Airport in Poland, Echo Papa Golf Delta, 
This is a payware scene by Dresraki Designs. I always manage to mispronounce that. You're looking at version 1, which is the release version for the PC version of Flight Sim 2020. No indication as to whether it's going to be released for Xbox. Um, hopefully it will go to the marketplace and you'll be able to get it. Download is 1.44 gigs and it stalls at just under 4 gigabytes. Currently it's available from both Sim Market and the Orbix website. There are slight differences in prices, but really we're talking pennies. Sim Market price is €21.60, which equates to roughly $18.55 US or £20.45 UK. As ever, US and UK prices are all estimates converted from the Euro, and they do include VAC, VAT or tax, which of course can vary depending on your country of purchase. I have no hesitation in recommending this scenery, it's stunning. Um, it's right up there with the best, and um, it gives you a good idea of what's possible within the simulator, and we really haven't gone that far yet, there's more to do I think. So there you go folks, um, this is Lee, your virtual airline pilot, we're wrapping up another review, this is the first of three this week hopefully, um, very happy with this airport, very happy to recommend it, once again I was sent it for review, I didn't buy it, but even so the thoughts and comments are my own and they've not been influenced in any way by the developer, really really nice scenery. So look out for later this week. We've got two more scenery reviews coming, hopefully all being well. We'll be looking at Salt Lake City, Kilo Sierra Lima Charlie. New scenery just released by Paxim. Um, so I'll have a close look at that for you guys that like to fly in the United States. And we're also going to have a very good look at the new Stansted Airport Payware scenery by Innie Builds, which has been out a couple of days now. Um, we'll have a look and I'll give you my take on that product. So once again, folks, um, just a little reminder, I now have an option where you, if you like my work and you want to help support me a little bit, you can now buy me a coffee. Link is in the description below. Um, any donations are much appreciated. I'm retired. I'm living on my pension now. But I enjoy doing these reviews, and um, if you enjoy them too, then um, please consider supporting me with a small donation. It would be really helpful. So thanks again folks, thanks for joining me, appreciate your um, subscriptions and your viewing time, I'm happy to talk about this and other things in the comments below, I will see you in the next video, so take care, bye bye for now.